every language is so important and I really wish I personally had more knowledge on how to preserve that and like how to help other people preserve their culture and language because I don't mm -hmm. know what I could do but like it's so interesting I'd love to know as you're a global citizen how have you noticed French being used differently in different parts of the world. I am under the impression that people learn or use French in more of an academic official setting mm. and they use other languages at home with their family and friends, which means that when you go to Tunisia and you speak French to people, they speak exactly like we do in France. And I don't like to pass the judgment of like a better French or a proper French because linguistically there's no such thing, but for most people it would be deemed a more correct french like a, a french that's more proper more elegant you know um and so yeah i find that as you said people push towards go in france go to france to practice french go to paris to practice french when really people french learners would have an awesome time going to learn french in senegal mm. but also discovering a different culture so in Arabic, when you say hello, you will say one of the ways, at least in that region, is marhaba. And the other person can answer marhabten. And so adding this like N suffix means that you're saying two of, so like two hellos, right? So you would say hello, I would say two hellos or like hello back, right? Mm -hmm. In Lebanon, they mm -hmm. will say bonjour. And then the other person will say bonjouren. So like they will add the Arabic suffix suffix to the French word to Arabize it. And I just find that so beautiful. Like it's just linguistically speaking, it's so beautiful. That's amazing. And, well, I went to Mexico wanting to learn Nahuatl. And so everyone there, literally every single Mexican person I met said, oh, Nahuatl is not a language, it's a dialect. Mm. And I was like, whoa, what? Oh, no, no, absolutely no. not. Like, I'm sorry, if you look at the definition of what a language and what a dialect are, you know, there are multiple dialects of Nahuatl, depending on the region, yes. But Nahuatl is not a dialect of Spanish. It, no, absolutely. Like, these languages are going to disappear if no one learns them, right? Like, if no one passes them on. So I think it's very impressive, as you said, that so many languages have survived that intense colonization but i think that our colonization nowadays is worse because we use social media we use like you know this kind of this western uh culture or identity i guess that a lot of country a lot of people around the world kind of want to acquire because they've been made to think that this is what success is like right like you're successful if you have an american car and you have french mm. clothes and you know and so I think that now the colonization is more brutal when we talk about languages and culture. I think they're more at risk of disappearing than before. We have a lot of slang in French that comes from Arabic. And when I heard those words in, in Jordan, out of nowhere, I heard them and I was like, wow, it has to be, it has to mean this. Like it for sure it means that in you know French or English. Un toubib in French is a doctor, but it's like a slangy version of doctor right in jordan if i'm not wrong i think they say tabib or tubib or something super super close you know you make the connection well i made the connections because of that french slang and these words and their context and i just it blows my mind every time that i'm able to connect between two languages like even the stupidest word it <laughs> feels like magic to me it's so cool starting to teach languages is what kind of made me stop judging people because for me <clears throat> I've always been obsessed with learning languages. Like, you know, first it was English. I used to invent languages when I was a kid. Like, I, you know, like, <laughs> it's that big of a deal for me. It took me a while to understand that not everyone is like that. And when I started to teach English and then French, specifically French, because I was teaching one-on-one, -on -one, that's when I realized, you know, not everyone has the je m'en fous attitude. And that's why it's so hard for so many people to learn languages because they and please hear me out i know it's gonna sound mean but like they just care too much what people think and and it's it's hard to kind of let go of that and so i learned as a teacher that the most important thing when learning or teaching teaching 
languages is compassion and patience and kindness. In light of the conversation that we had, and then in light of the fact that you are teaching French, what are some of the pitfalls and things that you see that learners face? Um, what are some things that you see learners struggle with? And what is your general advice for people who are learning French? French culture has so many cool things, like so many castles and art and architecture. This place is, wow. A French meal that is overrated and one that is underrated. Okay, I'm going to get kicked out of, I'm, they're going to take my French nationality for saying this. 